Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good day, depending on where you are. Hopefully you all are doing well. TGI Friday to those of you who celebrate it. Hope you all are doing fantastic. Hope you all have done fantabulous things so far. I'm still here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm getting ready to go back downstairs and do the confidence factor again and get ready to head out to my flight to get ready to get back to North Carolina today. Um, I want to also send my prayers out to those of you who are being affected by some of these storms and all the stuff that's going on in I-85 and a few other things that have been kind of affecting the East Coast. And I hope you all are doing well today. So TGI Friday. So let me make some, I want to make a confession, but it's not a confession. It's an observation more than a confession. It's a lot of things that I want to talk about today. <laughs> a lot of times, uh, good morning, Ms. Robin. A lot of times, um, especially when I'm speaking out of state, and, and if I sound nasally, it just has a lot to do with the transition and weather, so please forgive me. Um, a lot of times when I go away and I speak at these kinds of events where I'm dealing with a multitude of women, um, I often do my best to make as many observations as I can about behavior. And I'm not a teacher, I'm not a school teacher, but I want to I want to compare something in the confidence factor to school teachers. So anybody who's either watching this or going to watch this or watch a rebroadcast, I hope that you can understand what I'm talking about. I remember one time my son is uh, in a, in a, a now but I remember he was in a school before and I remember um, I, I can't exactly remember exactly how she said it but my my son had a teacher in the second grade in his old school and she said that a lot of the reason why uh, she struggles to want to keep and want to stay in the teaching profession is because she spends most of her day disciplining more than she does teaching she spends the, the majority of her day saying sit down get up shut up you know whatever it is that they do in order to get the kids to mellow down because she was the first teacher of the day. So when they came in, they were very active, they're hyper, they're seeing their friends. And, and, you know, at that time, she was just confessing to me that she really was thinking about, you know, going and doing something else. And I meet a lot of teachers like that, I, ironically. Um, I come from a, an academic background. My cousin owns about six or seven schools in New York, and she even says the same thing, that you, you spend a lot of time... Uh, nurturing and fostering behaviors before you get into the academics and so some schools traditionally have high failure rates not because the school is not good it's because they spend a lot of time uh, dealing with the behaviors you know whether they have to sit down or whatever whatever so here's how Carol Sankar sometimes feels like a school teacher I sometimes have to deal with the beliefs that women have about themselves and I spend a lot of time uh, trying to get women to see a different version of themselves and you spend a lot but before I can get to the confidence factor before I can get to what it's about before I can get to uh, what the benefit of confidence is I spend a lot of time trying to get women to believe in themselves to see something in themselves to see the greatness of themselves and it takes a lot of time so by the time you're finished telling women how great they already are with all the the the, the greatness and the, the brilliance in them, what ends up happening is you spent, if I give a 45 minute talk, you spend 20 to 30 minutes telling them, hey, you are brilliant. You're gifted. I'm telling you, I'm not saying this to hype you up. Nobody's paying me to, to hype you up. I'm telling you this because you just told me what you want to do. And I see it in you. And I know you have everything that you need in order for you to be successful. And then by the time you're doing that, there's an exhaustive work that comes with that because you have not gotten into the message because you're spending so much time telling women to believe in themselves. So imagine you spend half of your time telling women, believe in yourselves, ladies, believe in yourselves. Come on, come on, believe in yourself. You're worth more. And at the end of the day, the message that I want to give you here today, this is going to be a little bit, <clears throat> a little powerful, but it comes from a very genuine place. Good morning, Miss Tracy. It comes from a very genuine place, and like I said, this comes from my observation just from yesterday's session alone here at SM Tulsa. There are a ton of brilliant women. Now, I want, to, I want you to hear this, because this is called my triple B to you, because I wrote this yesterday. There are a ton of brilliant women who are broke because they don't see their own brilliance. So no matter what, 
even though I'm going to tell you you are brilliant because I happen to see the brilliance in you, you somehow look in a mirror and you don't see it in yourself. And so a lot of times what, what comes with you not seeing the brilliance in you and being financially strapped in one way or another, whether it's business, whether it's in your career, whether it's in your leadership strategy, whatever it is, one of the reasons why this keeps you back is because you're hopping from place to place, from person to person, from info to info, from book to book, from webinar to webinar, from coach to coach, from event to event. You're doing all of this busy work because you're trying to find a reason. You're trying to find a reason to find someone who's going to talk you into playing small. I realize that. So when someone like me comes along and says, no way, I don't do that um, for that, no, we don't, no, I don't function like that. You, you're trying to say, well, no, Carol, that's not how it is out here in the real world. You just think big. And ironically, that's not the way it is. So you hop from place to place looking for people to endorse your small thinking. Here's what I want to leave you with. Here's my confession to you. And here's the truth. And this is why I always say the truth is the most painful thing in the process of growth. The truth is the most painful attribute to growing. You will never actually experience excellence until you believe in you first. So I spent a lot of time yesterday telling women, you can do it, you're brilliant, you're great, you're wonderful, you're brilliant, you're talented, you're this, and you spend all this time, and by the time I'm finished doing that, I'm, so, I'm sweating, I'm exhausted, because I haven't even gotten into the message about why you're brilliant because I'm spending so much time making sure you see what I just saw in you. And I only met you for five minutes and I know your brilliance. You've known you all your life and you don't even know that. You look in a mirror or you're hanging out with people, you're networking with people who don't tell you that. You're missing that. I met you for five minutes and I can already tell you are wonderfully made. Not because you're in resemblance with him, but because you're just wonderful. Let me tell you, you're gifted. That thought that you're having is gifted. I mean, you are a gift. And so here you are playing small and saying, yeah, here you, Carol, but... And so you're going into your opposition because you're protecting yourself from getting out here in the world and preventing yourself from future failure. So my message to you is this. The truth hurts. It's a painful thing. It's something I've had to do over my life over and over and over and over and experience different levels of having people in my life that are only planted in my life to tell me the truth. I've had my share of having to sit in rooms and listen to people tell me I'm brilliant. And now I get it why the work of being exhausted through the through personal development and through professional development, I get it now why it's exhausting because we spend our time, a lot of the time, just like teachers, telling kids to sit down, take out your book, take out your pencils. We spend a lot of time saying, you're great. I'm telling you, I'm not hyping you up. You're actually great just the way you are. What you just said was actually brilliant, is actually the best thing I've ever heard. Why don't you get out and do that thing? Then you start with the but, and I can't. I mean, I just held a session Saturday, and that was, a, I'm not saying every woman in my room on Saturday was like that, but there were a few that still, that blockage, because you have to keep reminding them you're worth more than three, four hundred dollars. You're worth ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars, and you have to keep reminding them that you're brilliant. And even though I did that Saturday, I know that someone, a few of them, probably woke up Monday morning and went back to small because they didn't hear their own message. That was a message for you to know that you're brilliantly made. Don't ever get into a point of not believing in your own brilliance. Because if you don't believe in you, how do you expect other people to invest in you? How do you expect other people to want to be around you? How do you expect other people to want to say, I want to do business with you. I want to hire you. Whatever it is that you want to do. How do you expect that to happen? Like I said, when I did this on Saturday, I recognize that because I'm always observing, but I'm a, shh, I don't say anything about what I'm observing. But I know people get up the next morning and they hear it and they, they're on fire and in the room. Then they go home. And something happens because they go back into their comfort zone around people who don't tell them how brilliant they are. They hide that part from them because you stay around people who lie to you and people who tell you, you can't do it that way. Nobody charges that for that until you go back into your small thinking because you're not around people who tell you the truth. You're not around the right people who tell you the truth. And you're not around people who will support you in the truth. If you, if, let me tell you something about me. 
if you don't make sense, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> if you make sense, I'm going to tell you. But when, you're, when you've chosen to stay around people who refuse to tell you the truth, you play small. You show up small in the world. You go to these discounted black, 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 whatever it is. You f figure out your thing. Because some of you are, have been discounting yourselves so long because you discount your brilliance. And every time you discount your brilliance, you're broke. And while you're sitting there broke, you claim that you want to do something. But the only thing is you have to believe. Because if you don't believe in you, you being brilliant is not going to do anything for you. That's going to enact your fear. And here you are going to always stay in a place of wanting and desiring something you can never have. Only because the only thing you need to do is believe in you. Not me believe in you. I believe in you. But you have to believe in you. And when you don't show up as, a, as someone who believes in yourself, nobody takes risks on people who don't believe in themselves. This is a joke I make on here all the time. Do you want a doctor operating on your heart at the moment you're having a heart attack and you need a valve put in your heart? Do you need a doctor who doesn't believe in him or herself to be able to open you up? <laughs> I don't know about you. That's not my thing. <laughs> right? Would you like that? Would you like a lawyer who doesn't believe in him or herself defending you at a moment you have a $20 million settlement on the way? Do you want that? No. Nobody needs a fearful-based professional around them. And if you don't believe in you, ladies, I'm telling you, I say it to you, you're brilliant. But you cannot be brilliant and broke. You cannot be brilliant and broke. The thing is, most of you are brilliant and broke because you keep burying your brilliance because you want people to continue to lie to you and continue to tell you that's not the way to do it. And you work harder than you need to and you keep showing up small and muted in the market. And yesterday, one of the only quotes I put out during my presentation was that um, nobody will invest in you when you're invisible. And that somehow went viral for them. Like in the room, they were like, oh my God. Because I was showing women how much they stay invisible in the marketplace. This is, this is a, a media conference. So a lot of times, you know, they stay behind the desk or they stay behind the social media posts and they don't show their faces and, you know, they'll show from here up and they don't want to show you their body because they're worried about how they look and they're hiding their brilliance and they're wondering why their corporations are not continuing to accelerate them. And these are, these are women who work for major companies and do all of their marketing and media for them, but they hide so much behind all of this, I don't think I can come out, hiding and burying their brilliance and then frustrated that nobody's taking a risk on them in the market. So I want you to do great things today. I'm on my way home later on tonight. I should be home at one o'clock in the morning. And my whole gift to you is for you to make sure you recognize that you're too brilliant to be at this stage that you're in. You're too brilliant to be broke. You're too brilliant to play small. You're too brilliant to always be around people who are going to be passive about what you're worth. You're too brilliant to be out here hopping from thing to thing, from event to event, from conference to conference, because the only thing you're searching for is validation that something needs to change. You don't need that. What you need is self-belief. When you start there, everything else, everything else will start to open up. And then the market will be ready to receive you. And then when the market receives you, you'll get paid for what you want to do. But it's not going to happen until you believe in yourself. Because I'm going back down there today. I'm getting ready to get dressed. And I know I'm going to do exactly what I did yesterday. I'm going to literally have to remind women that they are brilliant before I talk. I know that that's going to happen. I'm going to go into hair and makeup and do all the things I do to get cute for the day. And I'm going to spend another 30 minutes reminding them how brilliant they are. And I'm only going to spend 10 minutes reminding you, you're too brilliant to be broke. You're too brilliant to be broken. And you're too brilliant to be bouncing from thing to thing. You have to believe in you. Nothing else. you got to believe in you. If there's any way I can support you, never hesitate to let me know at theconfidencefactorforwomen.com. Once again, I apologize for my voice. I'm gone from climate change to climate change and it takes its toll on me but if that's what i have to do to let you know that you're brilliant i'm willing to pay the cost anyway the confidence factor for women.com i'll see you ladies soon take brilliant action today and believe in yourself